Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now Qualcomm are in the middle of holding their Snapdragon Summit, an event they hold uh, every year. And there are several important announcements that have come out of this summit, including lots of stuff about generative AI, the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, that's a processor for smartphones, and the new Snapdragon X Elite, that's a processor for laptops. In this video, we'll be talking about the laptop uh, processor, that's the Snapdragon X Elite. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Okay, let's jump into the Snapdragon X Elite. This is more than just a run-of-the-mill laptop processor. This could potentially be the beginning of a new era. So, the Snapdragon X Elite comes with the custom Orion CPU. What do we mean by custom? Well, there are two types of processors that use the ARM instruction set architecture. Those are those designed by ARM. So, for example, the Cortex-X4 is an ARM-designed processor. And there are those designed by uh, ARM's partners who have an architectural license, and they are able to design clean room without reference to ARM's designs, but following the specification. Apple does that with the M1, the M2, and its iPhone processors. And now Qualcomm are doing this. The history, is there was a company called Nuvia that was founded by some engineers who left Apple, started a company to build a server chip. That company then got bought, Nuvia got bought by Qualcomm, and Qualcomm folded the design of that chip into their product roadmap. And of course, the questions are about, it's a server chip that they're trying to squeeze into a laptop chip. We're gonna look at some of these numbers in a minute. And of course, as you know, there is also a lawsuit going on, and I cover all of that between ARM and Qualcomm, and I cover all of that in a different video. But now here, uh, Qualcomm are launching a processor with the Orion CPU unit, and Qualcomm claims it delivers two times faster CPU performance versus the competition, we'll dive into that, or it can match the competition's peak performance with just one third of the power, and we'll dive into that as well. Okay, so here's the big reveal. This is a four nanometer chip built by TSMC, and it has 12 high performance cores. Look at them all there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, clocked at 3.8 gigahertz, and this is 12 cores, 12 threads. This does not have any simultaneous multi-threading, hyper-threading you might call it if you came from the Intel world. This is uh, pure CPU cores, each one running its tasks individually. Now one thing to note is there are no efficiency cores in this. So if you think about the Apple M1 and M2 processors, they have performance cores and efficiency cores. If you look at the latest generations of Intel's processors, you get efficiency cores and performance cores. And if you look at Snapdragon, processors for mobile, the Snapdragon 8 series, then you're gonna find performance cores and efficiency cores, but there are no efficiency cores here in this device. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? We'll have to see what the numbers turn out to be when we seal some real world numbers. Why hasn't it got uh, uh, efficiency cores? Probably because, as I said earlier on, this was a server processor that has been repurposed. They changed their product map to put this into a laptop processor, and they didn't need efficiency cores in a server setup, and so they probably weren't even designing one. Now, whether uh, Qualcomm changes in the future, we don't know. Whether this is actually a problem, we don't know. But it's a bold move to go with 12 performance cores uh, for a laptop. So we're gonna have to see how this pans out in the real world. Now, one other thing to mention is that it's well at 3.8 gigahertz. Look, we've got them peaking over four gigahertz here, which I find quite amazing. And two of the cores can do that dual core boost up to 4.3 gigahertz uh, if needed. But that still leaves us with the question, is this ARM V8 or ARM V9? We know that the Snapdragon mobile processors are ARM V9. There's no word on whether this is ARM V8 or ARM V9. It could be ARM V8 because this was developed a little while back. Uh, when, as I said, started with Nuvia and then their design that they were going through. And so maybe we'll find that in terms of architecture, Snapdragon's eight processors are actually more advanced than their Snapdragon X Elite processors. We don't know. That will be interesting to see uh, whether we get any details on that. If there are any extra details I do get along the way over the next couple of days, I will kind of add that to a pinned comment or something to this video. A couple other things to mention. This supports LPDDR5X RAM with 136 gigabits a second memory bandwidth and there's 42 megabytes of total cache. So hopefully this high uh, memory bandwidth along with a, a good 
uh, total cash size will mean that these CPUs can be fed because there's 12 of them. So they're hungry little beasts. They want things to do. They need data. They need instructions. And hopefully that high speed uh, memory bandwidth along with caching will keep them fed. That's the worst thing with processor design. If they stall because they haven't got what they need, they're waiting for something to happen. That can really kill the performance of a processor, even if the actual processor itself is pretty fast. If it can't get what it needs, then it just has to wait around. I'm waiting around, I'm waiting around here for the memory. Come on, let's get the memory, let's get the stuff there that I need. Hopefully, this will be good here. PCs powered by the Snapdragon X Elite are expected sometime starting mid 2024. So where are we now? They've been announced now by Qualcomm the end, towards the end of 2023. And then we're going to see them starting to come out in mid 2024. And as you can see from the little range of devices here, this is meant to scale across a broad range of thermal designs. That means we're probably guessing, as you can see here, they're, they're suggesting, you know, you can have flip kind of books. Uh, this looks suspiciously like uh, a, a Microsoft Surface kind of book with that little kick leg and that kind of out there. Of course, this is, these are only just demo ones, but you'd imagine that there's going to be a Microsoft Surface device coming out with this uh, processor. We can imagine some with active cooling, some without active cooling. They obviously will be different. They will have obviously different thermal and therefore performance characteristics, but they're saying that this chip... They can put it in all kinds of things uh, and it can scale accordingly. Okay, so let's look at the performance. This is multi-threaded performance. These are numbers provided by Qualcomm. Few things to note. First of all, there's no scale here on the left-hand side. We do seem to have a scale here along the bottom for the power consumption. This is based on Geekbench 6.1 multi-threaded running under Windows, which means that these are probably almost certainly Intel chips running on some kind of laptop. Uh, we are hoping to find out what they actually are. And what Qualcomm are saying is up to two times faster performance versus the competition. So this is the performance. So they're saying here's the performance and look how much higher the performance is than the uh, Intel chips and one third of the power consumption. If you take that performance number there and you go across here, well, this one up here is using something around 40, 50 watts here, they're around 15, 20 watts. So they're saying, well, this is a, you know, a much, much lower power consumption for the same performance. Or if you go up to the same level of power consumption, 50 watts, then it's going to give you much, much two times the performance. Again, these are Qualcomm's numbers. So we will, of course, see what we get when we do actual testing in the real world when these things come out. And then they've got another chip here. Again, we're assuming this is an Intel chip and it's showing that it can bump itself right up to 90 plus watts on a lot of laptop chips. That's a lot of power. And it's saying that even then the performance is lower than what's possible with a Snapdragon uh, X Elite and using much less power, 35-ish kind of watts there. So this is multi-threaded performance. Note, they haven't given us any single threaded. So they're relying on the fact that this has got those 12 high performance cores this 14 core chip, when we find out what it is, will likely have performance cores and efficiency cores. So up to 60% faster performance versus the competition, one third of the power versus the competition. Again, these are Qualcomm's numbers. But here's another interesting one, best in class CPU performance, 50% better peak multi-thread performance than an ARM-based competitor. And as far as we understand that, that's compared to an M2 chip but unclear if that's a vanilla M2 or a Pro Max or Ultra. Let's assume it's an, a vanilla M2. So, so Qualcomm are saying that compared to the normal M2, this offers 50% more peaked multi-threaded performance. Again, noting that the M2 has performance cores and efficiency cores, has less cores uh, than this 12-core Qualcomm chip. And these are all high-performance cores, but even so, in that scenario, it says it's faster. So in that sense, Qualcomm are saying this is an M2 killer. They've got a chip that is faster than the Apple M2. In that sense, I really can't wait to get my hands on one of these. Uh, this would be amazing to see what it can actually do. Now, of course, this being Qualcomm, we Qualcomm make GPUs as well. Not only do they now design their own CPU with the Orion. When I say now, of course, they have designed their own CPUs in the past. Uh, this has got the Adreno GPU in it. 4.6 teraflops, support for internal displays up to 4K at 120 hertz. Uh, upgradable drivers. So this isn't uh, something that just gets locked in. You can download the drivers 
uh, on Windows, of course. And so we know it supports DirectX 12. Now, this is, of course, the same kind of GPU as you're going to get inside of a smartphone. We don't know the difference. Qualcomm over the last couple of years have really reduced the amount of information they give about GPU that even give it a number anymore. It's just an Adreno GPU. The Adreno GPU that you get in the Snapdragon X Elite, they don't tell you anything more than that, which is a pity. Uh, I've talked to Qualcomm about this and they acknowledge that, but they still haven't changed their minds about it. So we don't know what this is. We don't know what it's called and we don't know how many, you know, cores it's got or how many render shaders it's got and all that kind of stuff. We don't know any of that stuff. However, they do give us some numbers in terms of performance. Again, no scale here on the left hand side. On the right hand side, we've got performance, uh, power, sorry, consumption, two times faster GPU. Now we're assuming that this is other embedded ones. Competitor A doesn't say laptop. This is based on 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme, uh, matches PC performance one quarter of the power. So again, you understand these graphs as we were talking about earlier, performance versus the power. We don't know what chip this is, we don't know what integrated GPU this is, but if we do find out, it'll be very interesting. And the same thing again, competitor B, a much faster GPU, but again, it goes up to over 60 watts here, and they're saying, no, they give you greater 80% uh, faster GPU performance compared to the competition. Is this Intel's embedded? GPU? Is this an AMD Radeon embedded? Is this an RTX, an NVIDIA RTX embedded? We just don't know. We just don't know who they're comparing it to. Uh, again, interesting if we can find out. Now, there is another aspect to all of this because we are looking at a system on a chip. You're looking at CPU, GPU, and you're also looking at an NPU. So, of course, with the explosion now of generative AI, both in terms of image creation, in terms of things like chat GPT, stable uh, diffusion, then, of course, Qualcomm are highlighting, quite rightly so, what they can do in terms of this. And so you've got the Hexagon NPU that's built into the Snapdragon X Elite. Overall, it's called the Qualcomm AI engine because you can get a combination of CPU, GPU and NPU all working together. And it's an AI engine. And uh, one of the things they're talking about is that they can take a 13 billion parameter large language model, like, for example, uh, Llama or Llama 2 from uh, Facebook stroke Meta or a 7 billion parameter one, run it on the device. And if they write the code correctly, they can get it to use the Hexagon NPU, which means they're saying you can get 30 tokens per second output. And that's when running a 7 billion parameter device. Now, this is important because I've talked about this in other videos. What we need to have going forward is these kind of models running locally. So we're not sending them out to the cloud where there's these massive, massive machines running with huge, huge GPU setups on them and huge, huge supercomputer kind of setup. These are things that can happen locally. And once we can have these, get these things happen locally, then our local assistants, the voice assistants, uh, can become so much more powerful generating emails, helping us create documents, even generate images can all happen locally. Now, what's the context of this? On my M1 MacBook Air using LM Studio, which I've covered in other videos here on this uh, channel with metal acceleration enabled, I get 10 tokens per second when running a 7 billion parameter Llama 2 model on device. Okay, so this is claiming that it's three times uh, faster. So this is giving you 30 tokens per second uh, using the Hexagon uh, NPU. Again, very, very interesting to see this in action. And here again, they're showing you where we are kind of with NPU performance. Really in the PC market, NPUs are not really being used very much. Again, is this uh, about an Intel chip or an AMD chip? Uh, a a Apple... M1 and M2 have got some kind of neural processing engine built into them, uh, but they're climbing 45 tops just for the MPU. Other times, uh, Qualcomm are quoted in a tops when you combine the CPU, the GPU, and the MPU all together. This is just uh, an MPU number 45 tops. Tops, unfortunately, is meaningless because it just means operations per second, but what type of operations we don't know. But it's the only number we've got at the moment, so there you go 45 tops. Uh, but it does potentially, I've got another video here on this channel about how the NPU in the existing Snapdragon uh, desktop compute processors, laptop processors, can actually do things like real-time background noise removal and so on. Very, very interesting. Something that we've got to have uh, nowadays uh, in all of our mobile devices, not just smartphones, but also in laptops. And this just 
boost that game up a whole another factor. So I'm very excited to see that coming. Of course, this is in Windows. It will be Windows laptops. Seeing that uh, performance of that, stable diffusion, background noise removal, background removal for Zoom calls, all accelerated by um, by MPUs, generative AI, fantastic. Also, a few other things to mention along the way. What have we got? It's got support for SSD NVMe interfaces over PCI E Gen 4. Excellent to that. So, of course, you've got a laptop, you're going to have a proper NVMe SSD inside of it, as you would expect. UFS 4.0 support if that's needed. It's got good video encode and decode. We're going to encode 4K 60 frames a second, 10 bit. This is HDR, H.264, H.265 and AV1 encode. Fantastic. This is really good. For decode, 4K 120 frames a second, 10 bit. 264, 265, VP9, and AV1. So you've got AV1 encode and decode, as well as 264, 265. Fantastic. So look at this, USB 4. USB 4, which is basically Thunderbolt, built-in supported in the chip, along with USB 3.2 Gen 2. So in terms of I.O. and video, so ignoring the CPU, ignoring the GPU, ignoring the MPU, but just in this, this is exactly what you want from a modern day laptop. This is the kind of things we need. Good video encode, good video decode, good IO to the outside world, good IO internally, top marks. This is exactly what we need. And so here's the overall um, summary of what we've got. So it's best in class performance versus, there you go, x86. They're definitely saying that there. Now we still don't know which one, x86, 64 bit, just to be clear there. Two times faster performance, they're saying for multi-thread. Uh, they got two times faster GPU. Again, we've just covered all that. Triple monitor support, very good. Generative AI, you can run 13 billion, uh, uh, parameter LLMs, large language models on device, up to 30 for, uh, tokens a second for a 7 billion one. Then you've got other things here to do with the MPU 45 tops and so on. Uh, and then matches peak performance at one third of the power. So they're saying, no, the fact we don't have efficiency calls is not a problem. They're saying it's not a problem. So this will be interesting to see in the real world whether it is or isn't. So they're saying no, because we're using one third less of the power anyway. So we're doing really well. And as I mentioned, scalable across devices, which we'll see in 2024. So am I looking forward to seeing devices with this? Absolutely I am. Absolutely I am. Let's see what Qualcomm's partners can uh, produce, what they're going to release uh, next year. Okay, so there we have it, the Snapdragon X Elite with the custom Orion CPUs. I'd love to hear what you think about it in the comments below. As soon as we get any kind of benchmarking data, I'm certainly going to make a video about that. So you should subscribe to the channel so that you know when I drop that video. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.